Oh no, what are you gonna do? You may have bought all yellow foundation for your brood nest and you may never be able to see your eggs again. I may have bought the wrong color and I'm all ready for my bees with the wrong color. What do I do now? Beekeeping frames are one of the most important components inside your hive. And you can see here, there's some of them that are black foundation. Others have a yellow foundation. Even some have white. Which one is better? Stay tuned, let's find out. Hey everybody, what's up? David Burns, EAF Certified Master Beekeeper. Good to be with you again. Thanks for joining me for another great beekeeping video. And today, I do have some show and tell things to show you about frames in your hive. And you may be thinking, oh no, whatever he says, I may have bought the wrong color and I'm all ready for my bees with the wrong color. What do I do now? Well, hold on, let's just wait and we'll see if that's true. Also, we're gonna give a shout out to two subscribers coming up. So you might be that guy or gal, so stay tuned. You might get a big shout out. Well, today we're gonna to look at frames and I wanna start by looking at this one. Now, you may know this one pretty well from previous videos that I've made about the green drone comb. This is actually not part of the regular frames that you have in your hive, for those of you that are just starting out. This is for mic control. Please look at the list of videos that I've made. You know, just start binge watching my videos and you'll come across the one called uh, Green Drone Comb for mic control. So we're gonna take this one out of the equation. It's all plastic, but don't get confused with other all plastic frames that aren't green drone combs, such as this one. This is all plastic, look at that. Now it's not a green drone comb. Some of you may be colored blind or some of you just can't tell the different colors. So you might get confused saying it looks a lot like the one he just had that was green drone comb. Well, it's not. If you look up close, uh, let me get these side by side. I think we can get this looking pretty good for you here. If you look, you might be able to tell the cells are much larger on the green one than they are on the one that's more yellowish. Do you see the difference? So the green one is for drone comb, for mite trapping. And then this one with a smaller size cell or the more honeybee size cell that are for worker bees, this is a frame just like any other frame. It's for your brood nest area or you can use it for a honey super and a deep honey super box. But this is a traditional size cell for worker brood where this is for drone for capturing mites. Now they are made out of plastic, they do look similar, and that's why we've always uh, enjoyed this one being a really sharp green so you don't confuse it with your regular plastic frames. Plastic frames have become more commonplace in the recent years. Uh, back when I was younger and beekeeping early on in my beekeeping endeavors, we used a uh, wax foundation like this. I don't have any more. I just had a piece of this, but as you can see here, uh, you can tell that it's just a wax foundation. That means it's flimsy wax. It's not much to it. And we had to make our own frames and we use wires like this and the wires kind of held everything together. I just had a piece I wanted to show you. That's just pressed out wax. That's all that is. There's no plastic to it. Now it took me a while to transition off of wax frames into more plastic frames. And I did try the all plastic frames for a little bit. And you see in some of my videos that I still do have many uh, just all plastic uh, foundation frames, everything out of my hives working. That means that even the parts here are plastic. The sidebars, the top bar, the bottom bars are plastic. It's molded as one piece, beeswax coated. And the only complaint I've heard about these, some people say that the bees tend to build columns, bulgy types of strips of wax, rather than a smooth pulling out of the wax. I have seen that on plastic foundations, but I've seen that on wax foundations as well. I think the trick to this is to maybe give these an extra coat and they'll pull it out more evenly. I only use plastic foundation and as most of you can see in my videos, they pull it out pretty well. Now this is a uh, similar plastic foundation, but notice this is my preferred frame. Let me say again, I don't hold the answer. I'm not suggesting you do what I do and only what I do. Just telling you what I like and you might like something different and that's fine. 
This is a wooden frame, wooden top bar, bottom bar, side bar, but it has a plastic insert. The reason I like that, you can pop these out real easily, change them out, pop them back in if you want to. If you wanted to discard all the comb that has been drawn out, look how easy that is. And you can just throw that in the fire, burn it, do something, bury it, I don't know, throw it in the trash. But then you can put a new sheet of foundation in here and snap it back in place and you're ready to go just like that. No more wiring with those uh, wax foundation. I know some of you are wax foundation lovers and it is fun and I did it. I started my beekeeping endeavor that way. I understand that some of you think that's the only way to do it. I, that's fine, good for you. This is just an easy way for me to really enjoy beekeeping is with these plastic inserts. Now, I really made the video, wanted to center it on the question of color because we really have many colors of foundation, more than I can show you here because I just don't have the other colors. I don't use them. I do have some that are white. Uh, they are, I used them in a super, remember that video? Uh, I'll put the clip right here. You can see this video clip I'm showing you now of a honey super with just very white foundation in that super and the bees did really well. But notice, I want you to see the difference. Some of you tell me you have trouble finding eggs or seeing eggs in your, in your hive when you do your inspections. For those of you that are new to beekeeping, if you don't realize it, you need to check for eggs on a regular basis. Checking for eggs means your queen is in good health, she's laying eggs. You don't have to find your queen all the time. As long as you see eggs every two weeks, you know your queen's fine. But finding eggs can be a challenge because they're so small. And if you have gray hair like I do, that means your eyes have, an, have probably also <laughs> dimmed a little bit and it's harder to see up close. So color can really help with that. Black foundation really makes the eggs and the larvae pop and they're much more visible because eggs and larvae are white in color. So something white on a black background is much more visible than something white on a almost white, beige-ish, yellowish background, it's very hard to see. I'll be the first to admit it, that when I'm looking for eggs on this color of a foundation, they are much harder to see. Now this frame here is a medium size frame. I just grabbed it. I didn't see a color like this in, in black, but you get the idea. And so a lot of people will keep bees all in this size, a medium frame versus a deep frame because they're, they're a little bit different in size, but they do prefer all their boxes to be one size, so they opted to go with the medium one. And I have to admit, I like that idea a lot. I may experiment with that this year and try to keep a hive just in all medium boxes. You do have to do the math. In Illinois, we need about two deeps to go through the winter. That means that two deeps for me is a little over uh, 18 inches. So in order to accomplish that, I'm gonna need three mediums just for my brood nest area, medium boxes. So I may, I may try that. I don't think I've ever tried the whole hive in all mediums before. Maybe I have, I don't remember. Oh no, what are you gonna do? You may have bought all yellow foundation for your brood nest and you may never be able to see your eggs again. Well, it's not that hard. Let's take a look and jump into a video here. Let's do some inspecting on yellow and black and let's kind of, kind of uh, experiment. As you can see here, Here's a frame of yellow foundation, and we're gonna see if we can find the eggs. In these cells right here, I have eggs in those cells. That, mean, that means there's a queen that's laying eggs. It's not impossible to do it some of these, it looks there. just like comb. You can't really tell yeah, the difference. That's On the really other really hand, if that. you take a look at the frames here that are in black, black foundation, look at these eggs. Notice how these eggs just really stand out. It's, it's amazing. And so if you're really having trouble finding eggs, you might want to consider going to a more black base foundation on your frames. Now, I am working with another company that's supposed to be uh, doing some great work 
on plastic foundations. I don't, I didn't bring them out here. I'm, I'm not ready. I'm going to run those first and give a review on them, but they're black foundation. I believe with extra wax coating, everything I, I dream of and want in a frame, they seem to have it. So I'm going to be uh, working with them to show you those frames and show you how they perform in the hive. Once we get into good weather, I, I'm going to do a lot of experiments this year uh, here on YouTube. So I look forward to that. There's no need to freak out. Just calm down. If you got all yellow or white foundation, Foundation, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I'm just saying it's easier on the eyes if you go black like this. Do I buy all black frames? Absolutely not. I can still see uh, well enough to put my glasses on and I can see down in those cells and tell uh, whether they're eggs or not. Got to have my glasses though. Without my glasses, I'll never, I, I wear reader glasses and without those glasses, I'm not seeing anything. In the video where I ask you about the frame to identify, a lot of you said it was a queen rearing frame. I gotta set the record straight, it's not. Here's what a queen rearing frame looks like. Uh, this is a queen bar frame right here and this is the bar that goes in there. And in case you're wondering, I wanna show you just briefly how that works. Um, I have a whole class on queen rearing, an online class on teaching how to raise queens, so I can't get into that obviously here. That's a, a lot of lessons there. But these are little queen cups. I'll bring them closer so they're in focus with my eyes here. But these little plastic queen cups work nice. I will graft a larvae, a larva, and put it in this little queen cup with royal jelly. And as you can see by these cells here, these little circles are where I've had these queen cups before, but I just graft into these little cups with the larva of the queen larva with royal jelly. And then you just twist it into these holes like this. I put around 18 on a bar. So I'll have uh, three bars. This, this frame holds three bars. So once you have the grafts in here and you just slip these inside, I just made this frame myself with these spacers. And once you have it in there, then you put all three bars. So you'll have a total of about 60 grafts, 60 queens to be made. And you put that in a starter hive. After 24 hours, put it in a finishing hive. And just on day 13, before they emerge, you take the cells out, put them in mating nooks. So that's, that is what a queen rearing frame looks like for you, those of you that are interested. Uh, you can see here, I have a lot of writing on here. Uh, I take notes when I raise queens and I just write on the top of the frames. So that's kind of interesting in it. But one more thing I want to show you that's kind of unique, then we're going to give a shout out to some subscribers, is this box here. I actually visited with the gentleman that holds the world record of the most comb honey produced in a year. And uh, he actually gave me one of the boxes that he used. And if you don't know his name, if you're not familiar with his name, I understand you're probably a new beekeeper. Old timers will know this name. He's still living, he's up in age. And when I visited with him, he gave me this box. And look at this, this is what he used to raise his comb honey in. And these frames are interesting. I'm not going to say much about them, but look at that. These are the frames. This is the type of frames that he used in these boxes. And his name is Gene Killian. And uh, it was great visiting his home and his, all of the things. He's had a wonderful career in beekeeping, still keeping bees today. And uh, so I, I kind of treasure this. I don't know if I ever want to use it or just keep it as a keepsake. It's uh, pretty awesome to have part of, of his hard work and effort that he's had in beekeeping. So that was great. All right, so let's give a shout out to some of our subscribers. I appreciate you subscribing. By the way, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. You guys are really subscribing fast now. The ticker just keeps rolling. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for subscribing. This is gonna be, be a shout out to Steve Butler. Hey Steve, thanks for subscribing, I appreciate that. He said, what about landscaping cloth below the hive, at least not having to mow right around the apiary? I do that a lot. Earlier um, last year, I made a video about using a big sheet, a, a big rock of marble. I put a couple of hives on, and uh, that's interesting to watch that video if you, if you see me talking about keeping the distance uh, of grass uh, away from the hive, further out from the hive. So when you mow, you don't have to mow so class close to the hive. That makes a lot of sense, Steve. And I really recommend that. I've done it a lot. 
And I've also made the mistake of catching some of that cloth with my mower blade, sucking it all into my mower deck. So make sure you don't accidentally pull it up somehow. But it, anything to keep the grass down, I've used carpet remnants and put carpets down on the ground below hives, all that stuff, you know. Uh, you just don't want to have to mow too close because again, bees don't like uh, those loud running lawnmowers and, and uh, weed eaters. Remember, bees don't have ears. They have a lot of good vibration sensors throughout their bodies so they can really hear the vibration through sound waves, sound vibration on those mowers. So shout out to Steve. Thanks for being a subscriber. I appreciate it. A big shout out to our next subscriber, Matt from Easton, Pennsylvania. Brutal cold last night with the warm up. Would you suggest liquid feeding now, one to one or two to one? Well, first of all, Matt, thanks for being a subscriber. I talk about feeding tremendous amount here on YouTube. I've made a lot of videos about when to feed, what to feed, and <laughs> all that stuff. Uh, always in the spring, one to one. Uh, never feed bees two to one unless you're trying to help them build up stores for winter. It's a little more syrupy, and so it's two to one. That means two parts sugar to one part water. And if you do that, it allows the bees to not have to dry it down so much in order to store it as a resource for winter. Some people even like to mix it uh, more heavy in, in the syrup side of four to one. Now, I've never done four to one. I've heard people talk about how that's really great. That is extremely, extremely thick. And uh, I'm gonna have to try that and see if what people are saying is, is really uh, the, the news sliced bread or something because it sounds like it's really great. To me, it seemed like it would be quick to crystallize or hard to work. Well, I'm gonna give it a shot and see if what bees do with it. Uh, but I would say a one-to-one -one is the best way to go in the spring, Matthew. And, and also, uh, part of your question is, is it, can you do it now? You know what, if it's warm enough and bees are flying, Certainly, you can feed them liquid food because I look at it this way. If they're flying, they're able to defecate. So the more they consume of liquid, like it would be nectar, uh, they do probably want to defecate more as they're consuming more of that energy and that food uh, on their flights and all. So as long as they can fly and kind of air out, uh, I really think that would be fine to feed them liquid. Now, I'm on standby. I'll go to liquid this week for sure because it's going to be up in the 60s. It was almost 60 today. But then as soon as it gets cold again, and it might, fingers crossed that it won't, but if it does, I'll be putting some winter bee kinds back on there because it's real crucial for us to keep feeding our bees as much as we can until we get something out there for them to fly to like dandelions. So uh, don't just think because it's warm that bees are okay now. No, it's gonna be worse because it's warm. They're using more food. They're using up energy. They're making brood. They're needing to feed that brood. And if they don't have any food, it hurts them all the way around. So we do need to keep them well fed. All right, Matt, thank you for being a subscriber. And I appreciate you asking that question. Hey guys, I really appreciate you watching today. I've got a video for you new beginners. Uh, it's so good to help you know whether you, sh you should get started. We still have packages of bees for sale. It's not too late if you live in the area to start beekeeping. Uh, you want to get some packages of bees from us. We have those available at the end of April. So check this video out that I made about how to get started. I made it a few years ago, but things haven't changed on how to start beekeeping. And it's a good video to help you be grounded in whether or not you should start beekeeping. I think you should. Check it out. I'll see you next time.